I'm now joined by Eric Demain, who's giving this year's Porter Lecture on Geometric Puzzles and uh, Fun. Eric, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. So give us a flavour of some of the things you're going to be talking about in your address. Yeah, so geometric puzzles in general, we're, uh, we're thinking about uh, sort of the intersection of computational geometry, which is one of my main areas, and fun topics, puzzles and games. And so for me, it's a lot of fun to study the mathematics of toys that I like to play with. I have a big collection of puzzles in my office and uh, always playing around with them and then starting to wonder, you know, I wonder if there's interesting mathematics here, are there interesting algorithms? And so I'm going to give a big survey of lots of different puzzles and games uh, that have been analyzed either by me or other people in the field. You're going to be talking about a Rubik's Cube. Yeah, Rubik's Cube is, is, I don't know, such a classic puzzle, it's one of my favorites. And uh, I've been thinking about it for a while, and people have obviously been working on it for a long time, and just hit on a really cool problem, uh, a paper that appeared last year, uh, and so that'll be one of the focuses of the talk. Uh, so Rubik's Cube, you know, everyone knows the, th the classic 3 by 3 by 3 Rubik's Cube. And what we've been thinking about is what happens when you generalize it to n by n by n Rubik's Cubes. How does that... Uh, how does it scale? How does the number of moves you need to solve the puzzle scale with n? And if you take standard solutions to uh, the 3 by 3 by 3 up to 5 by 5 by 5 Rubik's Cube, these days people make 17 by 17 by 17 Rubik's Cube. So this is a practical problem. How do you solve that cube? Um, standard solutions uh, solve the puzzle in about n squared moves for an n by n by n puzzle. The, the, because the surface area is about n squared and each you make a few moves and you solve like one or two squares. But we found a way that you can do a little bit better and by making a small number of moves you can solve actually several uh, log n different squares at once and so you get a total number of moves of n squared divided by log n. So the idea is to, uh, and that turns out to be the best way to solve an n by n by Rubik's Cube. Now, Eric, you said you're going to be bringing together geometric puzzles and fun. What role does fun have in math? I think fun is important. Uh, fun, you know, personal satisfaction, if you want to formalize fun, uh, is I think what drives most people to be successful. I mean, you can do it for the money or for whatever, but I think the most exciting is to do what you do for passion and for fun. And so I, I, in, I want to communicate that fun to the world and show people how mathematics is actually really enjoyable. It's not just super technical, super complicated, super hard, but it's also a lot of fun to do. And I think puzzles are a nice way because even if you're not a mathematician, you probably play with a puzzle or a game at some point, and you can appreciate, oh yeah, there's some interesting, deeper stuff to this thing that I thought was just a toy. What are some of the wider applications of your work? Well, in, in general, there's some applications, even though we're initially motivated by fun. Um, in general, if you have some uh, sort of a re puzzles, these kinds of Rubik's cubes represent a broader problem of just reconfiguration. You have, maybe you're in a warehouse, you're moving boxes around, you have some constraints, you have limited space to put things. In what order should you move things around in order to sort of optimally achieve your goal, move all the blocks out, that sort of thing. And these are, I mean, in some sense, puzzles, a lot of puzzles and sliding block puzzles and things like this, which I'll also be talking about, are sort of simplified, codified versions of these real-world problems. And so by studying the puzzles, we actually get a deeper understanding of the, the real-life issues. Eric, thank you ever so much indeed for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks.